Let's take a closer look at the group policies. Now, the group policies define, remember with connection profile, we said it was a pre-login policy? Uh, the group policy is gonna be a post-login policy. And that is, once we've authenticated you, once we know who you are, okay, well, here's what it is that you're allowed to do. Group policies are reusable policy objects that you can apply through the connection profile itself. So as soon as somebody connects with a specific connection profile, this could be applied. Or the local user account group policy attributes. That is within your running config. Think about being at the command line, global config, we're using the username command. When I'm creating those user accounts, I can manually associate policies to them. Again, great for the lab, great for maybe your, your own private ASA at your house, um, but not typically something I do uh, with any intent to scale it. What I do in terms of scalability is I'd associate it through my AAA Radius server. And this is where we wind up tying it in to Radius class attributes, specifically number 15. So group policies simplify the configuration where reuse is required. Why? Well, we can set things at a very broad level, and then, of course, we can make exceptions uh, more specifically as needed. So here we are looking at the default group policy, which is called default group policy, uh, spelt like this. Uh, the default group policy itself is going to be applied to a connection profile called default web VPN. So in other words, if you don't change too many things, just kind of coming in off the bat, you're probably going to hit the default web VPN connection profile. And if you authenticate successfully, you'll get hit by the default group policy. Now this is going to give us just all the basics across the board. But as you see to the right, we can specify things like what banner should somebody see? Should we use a simple certificate enrollment protocol? What address pools do we use? Are we handing out IPv6 addresses? Uh, what tunneling protocol should be supported? Uh, your filter, this is basically an access control list for your VPN. What NAC policy should we associate? What access hours are permitted? How many simultaneous logins? You get the idea. These are just the general parameters. There's also servers, and then we've got multiple fields under advanced. So anything that I edit here, again, applies everywhere. And then if I want to get more specific, we can do these same exact options, but on a group by group basis, or even user by user basis. You just have to use whichever mechanism is most appropriate for your organization. Once again, just kind of contrasting the uh, configuration when doing this from Cisco Firepower and then putting it side by side against the Cisco ASA. Uh, they have a lot of the same parameters. Here you can see that they open that advanced tab and you've got concepts like uh, split tunneling, which says do we send all of the traffic through the tunnel or just corporate traffic through the tunnel and then send internet traffic out unencrypted. Depends, your policy uh, is, is gonna vary based on your company. Uh, browser proxy, uh, details for the AnyConnect client, deals, uh, details that deal specifically with Ike version 1, uh, for instance. A lot of those options are over here. Of course, not Ike version 1 because we don't support it on Firepower. Um, but some of the other options, of course, split tunneling, the banner, etc., they're just set up a little bit differently, but you can get to the most common attributes. So again, if you're on Firepower, if you're looking forward to uh, deploying remote access VPN, it should do what you need uh, unless you've got something really, really specific. That said, reach out to Cisco and let them know what you need because they're taking these older features that are missing and they're moving them over as customers demand. So just good things to keep your eyes out for.